I was trying to install a Proxmox hypervisor in VMware Workstation the other day as I wanted to test few things in Proxmox before installing it on a bare metal server. Basically, I was trying to do a nested virtualization, meaning virtualize a Proxmox hypervisor VM inside another VMware Workstation hypervisor. For example, running an Ubuntu VM in Proxmox that is running in VMware Workstation. Sounds crazy, isn't it? This setup would work fine, just fine, but there is a problem. It would require hardware assisted virtualization, otherwise the performance of the VM and the VMs running inside it would not be so good as we are doing the nested virtualization. So I knew that my processors support hardware based virtualization, so I decided to give it a try. However, there was another problem. Anytime when I tried to start the Proxmox virtual machine, the VM wouldn't start. It would throw an error message that says virtualized Intel VTX slash EPT is not supported on this platform. Continue without virtualized Intel VTX slash EPT. If I said yes to that, I would get another error which says VMware Workstation does not support nested virtualization on this host. Module HP power on failed, failed to start the virtual machine. So what if I say no to the prompt? Let me start the VM again and I clicked on no this time and it said fail to start the virtual machine. So this is not right, right? As I walk around, I could go to settings and just disable the Intel VTX in the processor settings and the VM would start just fine. As you can see, the VM is starting without any errors, but this is just a workaround. I wouldn't be getting the better performance that I'm looking for due to the lack of Intel VTX or AMD V support, especially when I want to do nested virtualization. So I need to enable the hardware virtualization and continue to use the virtual machine with better performance. So in this video, I'll be discussing how you can enable Intel VTX or AMD V step by step. At the end of this video, you will be able to install any virtual machine with good performance with the support of hardware based virtualization. Before we get into that, I would recommend you go through this step by step. By the end of it, you'll be able to run the virtual machine just fine. And one more thing, I also have a written article on the same with the step by step instruction guide, which I will link in the description below. So let's get started. Step number one, ensure your CPU support hardware virtualization. Most modern CPU these days do support hardware based virtualization known as Intel VTX or AMD V. But it is important that you verify before you proceed because if you have an older machine, chances are you will have to either continue using the virtual machine without hardware virtualization or you better upgrade your machine to latest processor that support virtualization. So let's check the CPU model. In Windows 11, go to start and type system information. Click on that. Here on the right panel, you will see something called processor. In my case, it is showing Intel i7-9750H processor, which is about three years old now at the time of this recording. It's very capable CPU. So let me go to the Intel CPU search site and check if it support Intel VTX. On my webpage, you can click on the Intel CPU search link here. Enter the model in the search box, for example, 9750H. The Intel i7-9750H CPU is listed here. Click on that. Under specifications, scroll all the way down. At the bottom, you can see Intel Virtualization Technology VTX is supported as well as VTD and EPT. So I'm good. And my CPU do support hardware based virtualization. But what if you have an AMD CPU? How do I check that? Don't worry. Let's look at the AMD CPU now. Like Intel, AMD also has a CPU specification site. Let's go back to my website and go to the AMD site by clicking here. Let me click on one of the processors shown here, maybe the first one. In the processor specification site, scroll down. Under supported extension, you can see AMD-V is listed, which means it does support hardware-based virtualization. Let me also try another one, for example, the 4500 series from AMD. Let me go back to the CPU list, just type 4500 here. Let me choose the first one. Here as well, under supported extension, you can see AMD V is there. 
So this is how you can check the hardware virtualization whether it's supported or not in an AMD CPU. And now let's focus on the step 2, disable Microsoft Hyper-V. Though Microsoft and VMware go together and ensured both VMware Workstation and Hyper-V work together without any issue, I've had bad performance with VMs in VMware Workstation while I had Hyper-V running at the same time. So depending on the situation, I use one or the other. So it is important that you are not using Hyper-V along with VMware Workstation, especially if you are planning to use nested virtualization. So in our setup, let's remove Hyper-V. Click on the start menu and type run and hit enter. In the prompt, enter appviz.cpl and hit enter. You'll be taken to the add or remove program window in Windows 11. On the left pane, you will see 10 Windows features on or off. Click on that. If you look at the Hyper-V section, you can see the Hyper-V feature is now enabled. Expand that and disable Hyper-V section. So when I uncheck the Hyper-V, you can see all the sub features got disabled as well, which is good. We got to do one more thing here, which is step three, disable the virtual machine platform. Now scroll down to the virtual machine platform Currently it is enabled. Let's disable that as well and click on OK. Searching for required files, applying changes. You get a message now which says Windows completed the requested changes. Don't restart the system yet. We need to do one more step. Step 4. Disable core isolation. Click on the start menu and type core isolation and click on it. It will take you to the Windows security screen. As you can see, it is now enabled. Disable that by clicking on the toggle switch. Click on yes on the security prompt. You may now click on restart now. It will proceed to restart the machine. Now to the step 5, which is important during the reboot. Enable virtualization in the BIOS settings. While the system is rebooting, get into the BIOS and enable the Intel VT. So how do you do that? I can show you from both Asus and Lenovo laptops. And the steps mentioned here are almost identical to other laptop vendors, but the key that you press to get into the BIOS might be different. Remember, only if your CPU support virtualization, then only you can enable this option, else it will not be available. In Asus laptop, during the system reboot, after seeing the logo, continue to press F2 to get into the BIOS. As you can see, we are at the BIOS screen. To make changes to the virtualization settings, click on Advanced Mode, in the advanced mode, advanced tab, the Intel virtualization technology is disabled. Let me enable that. Let me also enable Intel VTD as well. After that, you may go ahead and save the changes by pressing the F10 key. In the save window, click on OK. It will now boot the system back to the windows. In case if you got a Lenovo machine, you can continue to tap on the F1 key to get into the BIOS. I'm using Lenovo ThinkPad by the way. And once you are in the BIOS, click on security, virtualization, uncheck kernel DMS protection. You will now see Intel virtualization technology and VTD feature is now enabled. Press F10 to save changes and it will take you back to the windows. During the system reboot, you will see updates are underway. That's because we disabled some features in Windows 11, which is okay. Now we are back into the Windows 11 screen. There is one more changes that you have to do in VMware Workstation. So into the step six, enable hardware-based virtualization in VMware VMs. In VMware Workstation, right click on the VM and then click on settings. Click on processors and under virtualization engine, ensure to check the box that says virtualize Intel VTX slash EPT or MDV slash RVI and then click on OK. That's all you have to do. You may now power on the virtual machine. As you can see, the VM is powered on and we no longer have the error message that we used to get before, even while the virtualization option is still enabled. That's it in this video. You can now enjoy better performance from your virtual machine with the hardware virtualization enabled. Thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys on the next one.